All right, guys, welcome to the Filler Kerbal Space Program episode. Um, basically, for those that don't follow my Planet Coaster series, which is probably most of you, statistically speaking, I'm currently at home visiting my parents, and so as such, I'm not at my PC to create the Kerbal Space Program content that you may be used to. So, I'm like, okay, it is now Thursday, December the 20th, I'm going home tomorrow. I have to come up with some sort of Kerbal Space Program content to keep... We're not missing a Saturday, guys! We're not missing a Saturday, so I've got to think, like, you know, what do I have? I can't realistically go ahead and film a mission right now, so what do I have as B-roll? And I have a couple of things, so I don't know what I'm going to call the title of this video yet. It's going to be difficult, because we're going to do, like, we're doing two things, essentially. So the first thing we're doing, which you're watching on screen now, so we may as well cover this. One of the things that people criticised Green Harvest for, the film I made recently in Kerbal Space Program, in case you don't know about that, uh, this is one of the ships in Green Harvest. A lot of the criticisms of Green Harvest, you know, not that you're not, you're not, in, you're not. I don't expect everyone to like it. It is a kind of a niche style of video, so if you don't like it, it's fine. But one of the criticisms some people have was that everything is just clearly hyper edited and cheated and doesn't actually work in the game. And this is to show you that actually. Pretty much everything you see in Green Harvest works without hyper edit or infinite fuel or anything. This is probably the hardest ship to get into orbit, so I'm using this as the example here. Like, this is the Omega battleship that I launched in Green Harvest, and it does actually work without cheats. I thought I'd just show the ascent without any editing, so I kind of did a few. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Started to roll a bit there. I did a few different uh, launches of this thing to get the various different camera angles. This is just an unedited look at what the launches looked like, so you can get a sense of how this thing flies. And I've not put any cuts in it to show you the struggle of flying it. If you want tips on how to fly ships in Kerbal Space Program, it's just like, it's training yourself to never have to look at the screen, if that makes sense, as in the main screen, I should say. Obviously, you need to look at the screen. But just looking at the nav ball, with this ship, you want to do your gravity turn, like, a bit later than where you would, like, to conventionally do a gravity turn. But uh, even so, it's you're just flying off the nav ball. So you can see the marker. You've got the prograde marker, and then you've got, like, the, the central marker thing, the yellow crosshair. I don't actually know what it's called. I'm not going to pause the video and Google it, because, as I said, we time is, a, time is a, a big constraint today, guys. I haven't got time. So, uh, yeah, this whole video is rushed. I, <laughs> but, yeah, this is the... <laughs> this is the... Uh, I mean, oh, my God, I didn't even talk about what the other topic is going to be in this video. But the other topic is going to be building a space station. We can cover that as we get there. I'm hoping maybe my title was uh, succinct enough that you kind of knew that anyway. Who knows, really? We're all kind of just... We're all just swinging it right now. So there you go. There's the Omega getting into orbit, just to show that it does work without cheats. Pretty much, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to rack my brains. I know I'm going to forget something that I did, but I'm pretty sure that every ship in Green Harvest works without cheats, with the exception, technically, technically with the exception of the EVE Ascender, but that was made with, like, non-stock parts that were made up for the storyline of, of a Green Harvest, in that the fuel tanks were eternal in uh, like subsidized so they were way more efficient so I guess in the story of Green Harvest it makes sense and I clearly it's clearly made to show that it's not a normal engine and obviously all the Juno ships don't really work but they never they never you never see them go into orbit if that makes sense they're just sort of there as space stations and space stations in this game do actually work I know this because bringing us to the second part of this video we are going to be building a space station that I launched in my LAN Aerospace series. Um, I did say that so the, in this episode of LAN Aerospace, I built a gigantic space station around Joule, and it was a very, very complicated build, very intricate design, and the time-lapse itself was quite long. So I always, I said, like, I'm not putting the time-lapse on this video because I don't want it to last, like, seven years. But if anyone wants to see the time-lapse, let me know, and I'll upload it in, like, a separate video. And the overwhelming response was, yes, people wanted to see it, so I saved it for a time like this. <laughs> it's on the screen now. A time like this where I literally didn't have time to create any Kerbal Space Program content because, well, I did, but I've already had to make two Kerbal videos as it is to, you know, substitute uh, this Saturday's and next Saturday's video. So I was kind of like, oh, I, I've got time to make three KSP videos in one week. So this can be, I can use this footage I've had for a while, uh, put it to good use, and make this video that people wanted to see. So this is me building the dual station. 
very intricate build, to be honest. Um, I feel like I did interrupt myself when I was launching the Omega ship. I'm trying to think what I was actually talking about. Maybe I should pause and rewind just for a second. I'll be with you back. Oh, I'll, I'll be back with you like immediately because I can just cut. But uh, I'll be back with you, future Matt, who's editing this <laughs> momentarily. Okay, so I just went back and checked, and I was talking about flying ships with the nav ball, which is now completely not a helpful topic to talk about because we're not looking at the screen that shows the nav ball. But basically, long story. This is a terrible commentary. I should, I, if I were a decent content creator, I would just delete this whole thing and start again. But I am neither. I, I am not of privy. I'm not privy to that. <laughs> we're gonna just carry on. I'm getting slightly mad on caffeine, guys. I don't know if it was very obvious, but um, yeah, you want you want to like fly. <laughs> I'm not even talking about this, this this build right now. You want to fly using the nav ball. So keeping yourself as aligned on the prograde marker as you can using that little targeting reticule, reticule, whatever it's called, uh, on the nav ball. You want to just follow prograde as closely as possible, and that will stop you from tipping over. That was pretty much my thought process summed up in way too few words than I wanted to adequ adequately go through all the points I feel I ought to. Maybe in the new year, now it's 2019, for you guys anyway, not for me, but it will be for me at some point when this when this video goes live. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll make a video at some point showcasing how I fly ships without them flipping over because I've sent, like, I've launched some pretty ludicrous things in the past. I sent a skyscraper to Minmus. I launched the Amiga that we just saw in this video a second ago, and I will be launching this ship, which as you can see is pretty massive, and it is going to be a single launch, no uh, no, no docking in orbit for me. I did, uh, as you can see, I did sort of a quote-unquote flat packet in that I took all the parts and bound them in places where they could be like made into a skinnier profile just to help with the aerodynamics of the flight, and then they can undock themselves, redock via probe control and RCS thrusters and all that to reconfigure the station into the actual layout I want it to have. Um, but today is not that today. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about absolutely nothing, it seems. Where are we now? Seven minutes. We nearly finished because I've got to start doing other things. <laughs> no, as I speak right now, Planet Coast, the Planet Coaster video for uh, the Wednesday, it happens. I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to bother opening the calendar. But whatever the Wednesday of this week is, was, that's that's the Planet Coast video I'm uploading right now. Neptune Park, great series. You guys should all check it out. As well as my Insta... Maybe I should just do all my social media plugging now for the rest of the video. That will that will be that won't annoy anyone at all. I can't I can't imagine. Um yeah, my Instagram and Twitter and Discord, they're all in the description. And that's it. But I'll probably do some funny Instagram posts over Christmas, which is irrelevant now actually coming to think of it because Christmas will be over, but when this goes live. Whatever. Um when it comes to designing space stations, maybe I should talk about the actual uh, video for a second. I basically just stick on a TV show or a podcast and just while away the hours just doing things because normally like I would, you would just watch a TV show for like a couple of hours whereas I like I like like I like having something to do whilst also watching TV so I'll just often just build really intricate structures in Kerbal Space Program like really painstakingly and then never publish any of them as videos usually because the Kraken gets to them because they're so detailed and auto strutted to heck that uh, the physics engine freaks out and they just shake themselves to death. But on this occasion, it didn't. This is actually one of the least impressive ones I build on in, whilst I'm watching TV, which is probably why. I have got a couple of really cool looking stations and a base design concept that is co t totally, completely broken, but it is a cool base. It's just a shame that the Kraken always destroys it upon spawning. So maybe I'll have to work on it at some point, get it fixed and all that, because that was really cool. But maybe I'll maybe I should showcase some of them in the new year. I mean, I can't imagine that when I get back to my house from visiting my parents, I'll have much time available to me to make videos. So maybe for the first couple of weeks, I can showcase crafts I've already made and just try and fix the Kraken issues, which I guess, relative to designing whole new ships and whole new mission profiles, it's not that much effort. Who knows? It remains to be seen. So this is now my process of launching rockets. I was basically just playing around with different engine configurations and rocket ship layouts of how to get the payload into orbit. And I realized this thing is actually uh, quite significantly over-designed. As you can see, we've got those four gigantic boosters lifting this thing up. And it got, to, it got into the air ludicrously effortlessly, given the absurdity of this ship's design. So I ended up, and as uh, if you've seen the video this is from... 
then I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a link in the description. If not, I'm probably maybe, maybe on screen if I remember to do that when I'm adding the end screen details later. Uh, I'll link to the actual video where this thing flies its mission and you see it assembled and all the satellites get deployed and launch the relay network. But there you go. Uh, as you can see, that was such a long drawn out tangent that I completely missed the parts I wanted to talk about. But yeah, there were four boosts initially. It was way too good for its own good, I guess. So I, I just... I just scaled it down to two boosters, lifting it up, and there we go. We're now in the video that this was for, so I'll just cut it there. I hope you enjoyed this rambly Kerbal Space Program video in which nothing was really covered of significance, but I hope it was interesting nonetheless and really scratched that itch for the week. Normal content will hopefully resume next week, provided nothing drastic happens on screen. Our links to videos, I don't know what they're going to be. Also, a link to the subscribe and to Patreon, and that's it.